Hi, it's Steve. Today we're going to show you how to change the evaporator fan blade on your refrigerator. And it's a really easy job. All we're going to need is a quarter inch nut driver and a pair of needle nose pliers. Let me show you how we do it. Now since we will be working near some electrical circuits, the first thing we'll need to do is to disconnect power to the refrigerator. And then we're going to empty all of the shelves in the freezer section completely. We'll also remove the ice bin and set that aside. We're also going to want to remove the ice maker. So depending on your model, there may just be two mounting screws on the side, or there may be a third one below at the front. So using a quarter inch nut driver, start by removing that. Now the two screws on the side wall just need to be loosened. They don't need to be completely removed. And just lift up on it, lift it away from those screws and pull it forward enough that we can disconnect the wire harness connector and then we'll set that aside. Now next we're going to remove the auger motor assembly. And on this model there are two quarter inch hex head screws located at the bottom. So we'll remove those first. Then we're going to lift up on that whole assembly, unhook the top hooks on it and just pull it forward enough we can rest it on the shelf below. And then we'll need to disconnect the wire harness at the very back. Now there are locking tabs on that harness, so simply depress those. Disconnect the harness. Then remove that whole assembly and set it aside. Now next we'll want to remove the left hand mounting bracket for that assembly and it's held in place with quarter inch screws and set that aside. And next we'll remove the uppermost wire rack. So remove the little rack stop first. Then slide the rack to the left, just lifting up on it so that it goes by this little bypass, and then tilt it up on the right, and pull it out and remove it. Now next we're going to remove the screws that secure that evaporator cover in place, and there are five screws at the top and two more here at the bottom. Now once we've removed all of those screws, we'll next pull that evaporator cover forward at the top. And we'll need to clear that fill tube. And just lift up on it slightly. Tilt it around to the left, pull it out from behind that mounting bracket for the auger motor. And then pull it out and set it aside. Now at this point we'll be able to access the evaporator fan motor. It sits in a little mounting bracket that you can lift out of the way. And if the blade won't pull easily off of that shaft, we can just simply remove the wire harness that is connected to the motor. Use our needle nose pliers. We'll pull the ground wire off. And then carefully disconnect the two wire harness on the opposite side. And then we can pull the whole assembly out and then we can remove that fan blade. So using our needle nose pliers, we're just gonna reach in between the fan blade and the housing and just pry gently up on that blade Pop that off and we can discard the old one. Then just make sure that little plastic slinger is still on the shaft. We'll take our new blade, force it down onto that motor shaft until it bottoms out. 
then we can set the whole assembly back into the refrigerator. We'll connect up the ground wire and our two wire harness. So we'll start by pulling that harness up far enough that we can access the terminals. We'll put the ground terminal on first. Then the two wire connector, make sure that it's firmly attached. And then set it back down into the opening. Make sure that none of the wires interfere with the fan blade. And then we can begin to put the evaporator cover back on. So we're going to want to make sure that we tuck the bottom end of that in behind the top of the lower evaporator cover. One screw is removed. We can next lift up on that whole assembly and that will disengage two hooks that are at the very top. Make sure we slide it properly over that pacemaker fill tube and then just lower it down onto the wire shelf below. Rounding bracket for the auger mode. And then we can just bend that up enough. And then we can disconnect the behind that wire harness lower panel. inside here. We'll need to depress those and we'll begin locking by tabs on the side. On the top center screw first. Now next we'll put the upper wire rack in. Make sure we have the right side up. And then we'll insert it into the slots on the left side. Drop it down until it fits into the right side and then put the stop on the rear wire. And once we've got that unplugged we can remove the whole Next we'll assembly. put the mounting bracket for the auger motor on and tighten both of those screws securely. Well, next we'll install the auger motor assembly. We'll start by just setting it on that wire shelf. And then just look carefully at that wire harness receptacle on the back wall. Then line up the receptacle on the auger motor assembly. Insert it, making sure that both of those locking tabs engage. And then we're going to engage the two hooks on the top of that auger motor housing in these two rectangular slots at the back. Sure it engages both sides and that the harness is not pinched. Now we'll tuck up in underneath that fill tube for the ice maker. And then we'll install the two screws in the bottom of that auger motor assembly. Now next we'll install the ice maker. Our first step will be to attach the wire harness connector and make sure that the locking tabs engage and tuck that harness up behind the fill tube and then also make sure that the fill tube fits into the fill cup at the back of the ice maker and tilt it up against the wall and lower it over the mounting screws. We can then tighten those screws and if your model used the mounting screw in the front we would next insert that. We'll next put the ice bin back into position. And make sure that it engages that shelf at the front. We're now ready to reload the freezer, reconnect the power, and our repair is complete.